Welcome back everyone. Today ought to be a fun one. We got a Husqvarna 372. Got a highway big bore and a Weisco piston. And the Husqvarna 576, which was basically a big bore when they came out. 576, 74 cc's. This 372 will be 76 cc's once it's all done. But I'll show the trials and tribulations of porting these uh, highway big bores. Don't recommend it, and I'll show you why. Alrighty. Husqvarna 576 XP. This is one of the first auto tunes they had. And we're going to take it down and port it up. Here's the intake setup. Those are straddle ports. That's the actual intake port. Separate hose for the impulse. You can see it feeds the lower tunnels. This setup, real similar to the 592, 585, where the transfer tunnels are cast in. 550, 562, 572, they had bolt on caps. So it has the long winding tunnels. Single upper, that's a straddle port, that's the intake port. See, this is a 572 cylinder. Don't tell anybody, but we're going to make it use this piston. See the straddle port similar? One on each side. Fed from the front. And these are those bolt-on caps I was talking about. But 572, big bore will be a different build. Just want to show some of the differences between the two. Alrighty, got the base all turned down. Squish set at 24 thousandths. After machine work, no base gasket, landed at 76 and a half intake, 105 exhaust, 120 transfers. Kind of hard to see, but we're going to go to 102 exhaust, 118 on the transfers. Widen things up, flow them in a little bit better, and that ought to make a good runner. So I got them laid out, now we'll get them ported. Alrighty, here's finished port work. Blended in those lowers a little bit. Widen and raise the exhaust. And raise the upper transfers a little bit. And we raise the upper transfers. So get this cleaned up and put on. Oh yeah. Alright, now Pull that screen out, get the muffler opened up. Alrighty, I pulled the screen out. You can see this one was opened up a little bit already. But we're going to remove the factory deflector. I'll open that up even more and I'll weld on one of my new deflectors. Throw a fresh coat of paint on this. See, we just opened up underneath. And added a medium deflector. Alright, let's get this fueled up. Fire it up, and then we'll see what kind of power it puts out. Fingers crossed it puts out 74cc type power. It'd be real fun to get this to run with the 572. If you have both of them, leave a comment. Let me know which ones you like better. 572, 576, or even if you have the older, even if you have the older 570, 575, are they treating you all right? I do know they had some crank problems, or bearing problems, I should say, in the case. I think that's one of those things that kind of screwed it up for everybody else. But, we'll see if we can get this one fired.
That is one nice thing about the Husky setup, is if you're quick enough, you can push the choke in before it stalls again. But, fired up, so we'll get this one strapped on the dyno, and see what kind of power it puts out. Alrighty, here we have, this is an OEM Husqvarna 372. This was a low top, it started out as an OE, but this one showed up with a highway big bore. I don't normally port big bores or aftermarket cylinders because there's a chance they won't work out. And like I said, but there's a chance they won't work out. But I told the customer and he said okay and agreed. All right, so we'll get this one. This is a highway big bore. I don't normally port big bores just because they can chip, they can flake. And if that happens, it always happens after I do machine work, after it's tore down, after everything else. So I'm halfway through a port job and then the cylinder decides to mess up. So that's normally why I won't do them. Now this big bore is a fresh install on a brand new saw. This one has the Weiss Co piston and the highway big bore. So we'll get this set up and do a little bit of machine work on it. And fingers crossed that we don't have issues. This is another issue with these big bore cylinders. That's an overbore at the very top so they can hone so they can hone it true. And the spot up here, zoom in. The spot right here, this dark spot, that's actually bored larger. That way you can hone the plating true all the way top to bottom where the ring's going to ride. It's going to be real close to dropping the ring in just with the gasket delete and setting the squish. So this one's not going to be able to get the chamber cut anymore. But being two millimeter larger, it might not need it. There's the OEM cylinder. You can see the chamber already looks a little smaller. But on the big bore up top, the transfers are a little bit tighter, which has to be expected. And the big bore uppers are a little bit larger than the OEM. The intakes are about the same. And the exhausts are pretty much the same too. But it's just those transfers and transfer tunnels, but that's where all the power comes from. Got to get the mix out of the bottom and up to the top. So on this one, on this aftermarket cylinder, the highway, this isn't a tight nickel, it's just a highway. So on this highway, we're just going to cut the base, set the squish. So we're just going to shave a little bit off the bottom and lay it out and port it just because if that ring gets up there at the top and expands, it's done. But we're going to try and be real gentle with this aftermarket one and get it ported up. Alrighty, here's the finished big bore highway cylinder. Exhaust set at 100, transfers at 124, notch the lowers. Now this one, kind of a pain in the butt. Those bevels are extra large. This one really wanted to flake out with the burr, even had to be careful with the stone. There's a piece of the Nicosil from where I notched the lowers. I went through and outlined everything that I was going to cut. I used one of those diamond stones to outline all the ports. So I basically had to port this cylinder twice. That's why I don't like to do them. And it was still wanting to chip out and flake out. That's what that is. That's a hunk of the Nicosil. About two thousandths of an inch thick. Well, I just want to show that to people. Like I said, these are a great bolt-on option. 
everything looked good. The uppers were extra large, but that's its own thing. But as far as the finish and fit, if you're just trying to bring a saw back from the dead, that's not a bad option. But as far as porting goes, I'm not going to port another highway. Or I'm going to try and stay away from aftermarket unless it absolutely is necessary. But we're going to get this one put together and see what kind of power we can make out of it. This one. Going to get a dual port. Going to remove and open up this factory one. Then we'll add one to the side. And add a new one back where the factory was. Alrighty, here's the finished muffler. Replace the port on top, open it up. Add the hole on the side, add the port on the side. Get this big bore fueled up, fired up, and put on the dyno. Now we can get it put on the dyno, see what kind of power it makes. Alrighty, here they are. Ported, big bore, 372. Got the Weisco piston. And the ported 576 auto-tune. Well, which one are you rooting for? Which one are you guys rooting for? Think 372 will come on top? Or the 576? 576 is a little bit bigger, fluffier design. 372 is the old tried and true. Leave a comment. Let me know which one you guys think. All right, here's the 576. 17 pounds, 11 ounces. There's the metric. All righty, here's the Husqvarna 372, full of fuel and oil. 16 pounds, 0.7 ounce. There's the metric. Here's the results. Not what I expected at all, but it is what it is. So, and I finally learned a new trick with the dyno results. The numbers in the box are indeed the max horsepower and max torque. So you just have to look at the scale and see at approximately what RPM they are. But these are indeed the max numbers that were recorded. So, Got the 576 ported, came out on top. 7.48 horse, 4.76 foot pounds. Then the big bore, 372. This did not run as well as I had hoped. I built a lot more 50 millimeter with the OEM cylinder that run a lot better and stronger than this. That was kind of disappointing. But as chippy as it was, the limitations we had to work with, I'm glad it at least runs. But it does pull a little bit better torque down at the lowest part than the 576. It just doesn't make the power or reach out as hard. This is stock 576 right here. And the stock big bore 372. These highway cylinders, they're a great option if you're trying to get one of these 372s back to life. That's right there, right around stock power. Probably better than stock torque. But they just, they don't port well. They're not very friendly. 
I'm not so sure if those huge uppers didn't hurt it some. And I know that ring of death not being able to get the compression up definitely didn't help it any. But these are the numbers. We made 6.74 horse out of the ported big bore. 7.48 out of the 576. Now the big bore, it might actually seed in and break in a little bit and come up some, but because people say these highways, they take a while to seed in. But I really don't see it gaining a tremendous amount of power. Maybe another 2, 3, 4%. Which bring it up a little bit, but I'm just, I'm not really seeing it with the big bore. I'm pretty disappointed. A lot of time and effort grinding in it, making sure it doesn't chip away. And it still didn't come out like we were hoping. Alrighty, I'm back. Different graph. This one hit me right in the field, so I uh, spent some time looking it up. This blue line here was the last 372 I did. I have a video of it. A few videos back. Another low top OE 372. This was the OEM 50 millimeter cylinder. This is the big bore. That's the stock big bore. So you can see that 50 millimeter cylinder does not give up anywhere to the big bore. Like I said, I'm just yeah, a little disheartened actually. You know, I got hours worth of time grinding, saving, trying to keep this highway from chipping. Fingers crossed the whole time that it was actually going to make some decent power. I gained, gained power, but. That large ring of death, huge transfers, some of the shapes aren't the greatest, some of the directions not the greatest. It has a few handicaps going against it to make good power. Now, if you're going to port it, have it replated, maybe make an all-out race saw, might have some potential. Or if you're going to leave it as this, bolt it on right out of the box. That's right there on par with stock so if you're just going to look for a bolt-on and you want to say you have big bore that's fine like i said they work if you're going to try and port it good luck to you i sure hope you can get better results than i did but like i said ported big bore just a regular ported low top 50 millimeter so i just wanted everybody to see that because uh that one hit me right in the feels. It's not good seeing uh, lower numbers from bigger saws. So I'd like to hear your guys' uh, I'd like to hear your aftermarket experience. Do you have any that you hoped for and just did not work out? Guess it could be OEM too. But leave a comment. Let me know. Thanks a lot, everybody.